Hey folks, Ben Gilbert here with Engadget, and we have the brand new DualShock 4 in tandem with a PlayStation 4. There's even a PS4i, as you can see down here. And we're playing Drive Club. This is one of the first games that's going to be launching with PlayStation 4 when it arrives this holiday. Uh, and, and we're able to actually play a game, so let's jump right in. Uh, it's going to take a second to load and stuff. But uh, while we're waiting, you can see that there is a blue light up top. This is one of the major new additions to the DualShock 4. There's also the triggers have changed a little bit. They, uh, they have a lip, and there's a little bit of a curve to them, so your fingers fit on a little bit more comfortably. The R1 and L1 shoulder buttons are a little bit smaller and uh, a little bit clickier. Uh, there's uh, Out front, there's an options button and a share button, which are replacing the start and select button on the traditional DualShock. There's a, a standard D-pad. It's a little bit different, but pretty similar to the one on DualShock 3. There's two parallel uh, thumbsticks. They are uh, concave instead of convex on this model, which is the big difference, and there's a little bit of a lip, so your fingers are less likely to slip off. The PlayStation Home button is here, and uh, it's been moved down because of the uh, new touchpad that's right in the middle of the controller. It's clickable. As you can see, it actually activated something on the screen when I chose that. Um, I've got a choice here between a McLaren 12C and a Hennessy Venom GT, so I'm going to go with the McLaren because I've actually heard of that. Uh, and at the bottom of the controller, continuing with the hands-on of the controller, there's a uh, little bit of a, a port for your uh, headset or for other accessories. Uh, unknown so far, but the headset is uh, shipping with the box when it arrives this holiday. Uh, moving on to the, uh, the front face buttons, there's the uh, standard square, triangle, circle, and X button, which are, we're used to seeing on uh, DualShocks going all the way back to the PlayStation 1. And uh, around back, this one is tethered to the console we're using here. But this would otherwise, there'd be a micro USB uh, port here for uh, plugging it directly in for charging. Uh, you can play the game off of it if you're uh, out of battery, that kind of thing. But uh, otherwise, there's a little bit of a texture difference on the back. Uh, it feels like there's like little holes, and uh, it, that's about it. But it doesn't, uh, doesn't actually have any functionality. So uh, let's jump into the game. It's a pre-alpha code showing up here. So this shouldn't be 100% representative of uh, the, final, the final game that ships this holiday. But uh, this is uh, very much a, a work in progress, but it, 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 it looks nice. It's a next-gen title, uh, and the controller is responsive, as you see, while we drive into a fence on the side of the road. Uh, I'm using the, the, uh, the right trigger, R2, to, uh, to, to make the gas go, the uh, left trigger to stop. My car has stopped. Not a great uh, race choice. I used R1 to switch the view from cockpit view to uh, a, a little bit further back, and then even outside of the car. Uh, this isn't a manual car. Oh, wait, maybe it is. No, nope, it's not. It's, uh, it's an automatic car. But uh, this game is actually going to be part of the, the PS Plus Instant Game Collection when the console launches uh, this holiday. So there's going to be a full year that you'll be able to play this game uh, for free if you're a PS Plus subscriber, uh, which, uh, which seems like a good deal. If uh, you already have a subscription on PlayStation 3 or Vita, it'll transfer automatically to your PlayStation 4. Uh, the, the graphics are, are, are stunning. They're, they're nice. They're not... Uh, they're not completely mind-blowing, but uh, it, it definitely looks nicer than the stuff that we've seen on the current gen. The controller, again, is responsive. It, uh, it feels like it should feel right on a, a console. It doesn't feel like there's a, a lag or any sort of an issue between when you push a button and, and what actually happens on the screen. There's an imperceptible lag. Uh, and I believe that will be the case as well when you have it, uh, when you have it uh, not plugged in, right? That's not making a huge difference other than actually giving it a charge. Uh, there's actually a racing line you can see showing up in the game to try to make us better as we repeatedly crash into walls. And there's my silly face popping up that the PS4i actually took a picture of us when we started playing the game. Uh, so again, Dual, uh, Drive Club is a launch title for the uh, PlayStation 4, and uh, we'll, we'll have more on it when we uh, have our full review of the PlayStation 4 this holiday. Uh, but for now, uh, know that the controller uh, does feel good. It, it feels like a, uh, an evolution of the DualShock, which is what uh, all we could really hope for for the uh, PlayStation 4. Folks, we've got the uh, PlayStation 4 console that was actually unveiled last night for the first time. It's got the... Uh, now, I don't know what you would call that box shape, but it's, it's a little bit diagonal on the front and a little bit diagonal on the back. Uh, it looks great standing up, and it's a little stranger when you've got it laying down. Uh, but you can see it's got the, uh, the division that isn't perfectly 50-50, where the bottom is matte and the top is glossy. There's a blue line, or a white line as it looks right now. I'm colorblind, so bear with me. But there's a, a line that fades from front to back to, to, uh, to add some flair to the front. There's a PS4 logo and a disc tray directly in front. It's, uh, it's, it's, you, you, you slip your discs right in. It's not a top-loading thing like the latest PlayStation 3 model. And uh, moving around to the back, we've got... Excuse me, folks. We've got uh, 
all the the various ports in the back. As you can see, there's an HDMI out. There's the uh, the standard power slot. There's a, uh, a USB 3.0, and there's a uh, a, a uh, Ethernet plug for uh, for uh, the internet, and uh, plenty of vents for the the heat that the console will assuredly generate. Uh, it's that's an otherwise a quick walkthrough. We're also gonna in this this booth that we're looking at right here. We've also got the uh, headset that's gonna be shipping with the the console, and it's a, a mono headset. And uh, it's it's unlike the PlayStation 3. This one's actually coming with it, so that's that's going to hopefully encourage some of the online gameplay uh, that that wasn't as big a deal on the PlayStation 3 as it looks like it's going to be on the PlayStation 4. Uh, moving to one other accessory we can see in here, there's a, a charging cradle actually for the uh, the DualShock 4 that. Uh, that Sony is releasing themselves. It, it can uh, hold up to two, and uh, you can just drop your your uh, your console your controller right on there and and leave it to charge rather than having to mess with a, a micro USB wire, which is your other option. Uh, and then moving around to the last thing in this uh, this area, there is a PlayStation 4i. Uh, the PlayStation 4i, unlike the Xbox One, which ships with the Kinect, does not actually come with the PS4. Although it's a lot like the Kinect that we've seen with uh, with uh, the Xbox, it uh, it responds to to voice. It's got, I believe, four microphones. It has two uh, two cameras facing in the front. It can sense depth. It can it can uh, it can follow your hands. That kind of good stuff. But uh, it, I don't think we're going to see the kind of ubiquity that we're going to see on the Xbox One just because it isn't included with the console. But that's a, maybe a good thing because the console costs $400, $100 less than the Xbox One. And it's a, it's a very pretty thing. So uh, that's our first look at the, the PlayStation 4. And we'll have plenty more from you for E3 uh, in the coming days. Thanks very much.